should be good to go. It's a gloomy day, so if you hear any pitter-pattering or squawking, that's because of the rainstorm outside. Hey folks, my name is Dennis, and I like beefy men. Well, okay, I like all types of bodies and people, but like, there's something just kind of scrumptious about a big beefy man. Currently, I have two beefy men fighting for my heart. Well, in my mind, at least. The indie wrestlers Effie and Warhorse. But my fascination with fantastic physiques does not stop at just wrestlers. Oh no, I also have a particular soft spot for today's video subject, Beefcake Magazines. I actually have this one right here. Uh, I won it from Planet Queer. Shout out to Ian McKinnon and Travis Wood for their queer art review. If you're in the LA area, go ahead and check out Planet Queer on the second Monday of most months at Akbar in Silver Lake. It's a really good queer art review. But Beefcake Magazines. What are they? Well, they're a very interesting part of American gay male history, mainly used as a way to skirt around censorship laws and anti-gay laws during the heights of McCarthyism. So before anything, let's define what a beefcake is, and then what a beefcake magazine is. So a beefcake is typically a muscular gentleman who doesn't wear a lot of clothes and just likes to show off his physique. <sighs> you see why I like these two? It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Okay, so a beefcake magazine. A beefcake magazine was a periodical of sorts. It could either be large print or small print like one of these. Amongst these pages were going to be photos of young men, though sometimes there would be older men. And a majority of these male models in the earlier ones were nude, though they had to cover up in later editions, and we'll get to that in just a sec. So what was the point of these magazines? Well, legally speaking, these were catalogs to hire models. So it's hard to pinpoint when the first Beefcake magazine began, but their origins can be traced back to a gay writer and photographer in Portland, Oregon, Minor White. White was living and working at a YMCA in 1939, where he was teaching a photography class. Some of his first photos are just of scruffy young men done up in costumes to look like laborers. Now, it's not known if White gave these men any direction, but their poses are provocative, to say the least. To your everyday heterosexual, these men are just guys being dudes standing around on a break, maybe even taking a piss. You gotta pee on company time. But to the keen eye of the homosexual, there's no mistake, these men are posed to look like they're cruising. These photos and several other photos of whites were later added to a published collection. Another similar phenomenon was happening at this time in the late 1930s and early 1940s, one that would also pique the interests in the male form comic books. Now today's video is not going to be about the homoerotic subtext that was dripping in these early comic books. I'll let Glenn Weldon do that. But I will note that in these comic books there were ads for workout routines by muscle men like Charles Atlas and Jack LaLanne. These ads promised to take you from a 98 pound weakling to a muscle bound hunk. Writer Richard Landon says that these were the actual male power fantasies and not the fictional men that were on the pages of the comic books. The promise to transform your body and tell you how to dress and how to eat and talk to girls it's not too different from the alpha male YouTube channels of today. YouTuber Rutgo made an excellent video about channels like this, and if you listen closely, you might notice a familiar voice on part two of his series. It's me. I'm on there. If one were to take a look at these fitness ads, in particular the ones of Jack LaLanne, you could kind of see the homoerotic subtext in the photos. They ooze hypermasculinity and are posed almost erotically. Now, there's a reason why Jack LaLanne's photos look erotic. A lot of them were taken by Beefcake Magazine photographer Wes Warner, which nicely dovetails into the actual topic of the Beefcake Mag. Beefcake magazines were enjoyed by a pretty niche audience, mostly gay men who would spot them on the shelves of newsstands and understand exactly what was going on. And also boys who may have not understood what these feelings were, but had a curious fascination with the bulging bodies of these beefcakes. The 1998 docudrama Beefcake has a few interviews of men who were just boys during the 1940s and 50s, and they talked about how their curiosity was piqued by the images on the pages of Beefcake magazines, and how they either stole them or bought them amongst a pile of other comic books as to not look suspicious. Apparently some women also had a fascination with these magazines as well, though the photographers were indeed shooting these models for a gay male audience. In the 1950s, many of these gay beefcake photographers were sent cease and desist by the USPS. The USPS had labeled their work in the magazines as indecent. Many of the photographers would watercolor black trunks over the photos in the magazines so consumers could wipe it off later with a damp cloth to show the goods. However, the USPS caught on and many photographers were jailed for 
immorality and obscenity. Now, I've mentioned Russ Warner, but a majority of the material in this video, including the images, are going to be of the work of Bob Miser, head of AMG, the Athletic Models Guild, and the founder of Physique Pictorial. We're going to focus on his work mainly because he was the most prolific photographer and videographer, though his contemporaries would be very quick to point out that he wasn't particularly good. I myself am a photographer and a videographer, clearly. And yes, Bob Miser may have had the technical skill and did indeed shoot many photographs and films during his lifetime, but he wasn't very good. His poses, themes, and scenarios were extremely campy though, so there's a certain charm to all of his work. Miser had the bright idea to skirt these indecency laws by having his mother sew posing trunks for his models and making his magazine a catalog. Artists would purchase the catalog to find models to paint or photograph or star in film. And this kind of worked. There isn't anything illegal about mostly nude men wanting to be hired to star in the pictures. By disguising the magazines as model catalogs and using illustrations from Tom of Finland on the covers, Bob Miser was able to fly mostly under the radar because his magazine could be written off as like a comic book or just a catalog or something, though he was arrested along with other photographers at one point or another. Much like the work of photographer Minor White before him, Miser's magazines looked innocuous on newsstands. Just a silly picture book for kids and weirdos to the average straight man. But to young gay boys, gay men, and even women, the muscle men on these periodicals were no superheroes. So where did these models come from and how did they get convinced to make what was essentially gay porn? Miser and many of these photographers would stand in Hollywood handing out their cards to small town boys who just got off the bus looking to make it big in the talkies. You see, the same sort of exploitation of women did happen to men, it was just on a much smaller scale. The whole, uh, hey doll you want to be in pictures sort of deal. A lot of this could be seen again in the docudrama Beefcake. Sexual exploitation of these models was also rampant. Now many of these models were gay or bi and quite a few of them willingly had sex with folks like Miser and his friends, but Miser was arrested and charged with running a prostitution ring. You may notice a little something next to the names and catalog numbers of his models when you flip through a copy of Physique Pictorial. These odd symbols. These were a code a way of letting potential Johns know how their models behaved. This code included descriptions like glutton, likes to dominate, and petty thief. The LAPD caught on to this code and arrested Miser and all of his cohorts. I've mentioned it before, but I'd like to reiterate. I believe that sex work is legitimate work and that these workers' rights should be protected. I also believe that sex work needs to be fully consensual, and it's evident to me that Miser may have coerced some of his models into sex work that they may have not been comfortable doing. Gay history is full of heroes and villains, and as much as we would like it to be clean-cut and full of stories of us being the oppressed, many times we were the oppressors. Just go ahead and ask Hugh Lemmy and Ben Miller, hosts of the Bad Gays podcast. There's also something else to note that's a little interesting about these models. Many of them were straight, and they had no idea that what they were doing was pretty gay. A lot of them were just country boys who were like used to skinny dipping and like camping with other men. So being nude and showing off was not really considered homoerotic. But take that country attitude and put it smack dab in the middle of a nude photo shoot in Los Angeles and you got yourself a beautiful himbo ready to model. It's just kind of quaint how they had no idea that what they were doing was seedy and pretty gay. That certainly isn't something that you can get away with now. You would have to be very upfront with your models that uh, they're gonna be doing homoerotic work. And actually a lot of gay porn stars are straight. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end and beefcake magazines are no different. The magazines were popular during the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. However, in 1962, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Manual Enterprises Incorporated v. Day, ruling that frontal male nudity was not obscene and protected by the First Amendment. This essentially legalized gay porn. The magazines fell out of favor with audiences, and many photographers and models went on to do actual pornography. But not Bob Miser. Physique Pictorial Magazine, his magazine, was one of the last to be published the final film and magazine being published in 1993, one year after his death in 1992. The entire time, Miser refused to release anything that actually involved sexual contact, giving his work an air of innocence, for lack of a better term. I mean, he actually had nude men now, but they didn't do anything sexual. He even stopped models from touching each other's genitals during shoots. During this time, though, Beefcake magazines were having a bit of a renaissance, it went along with the gym craze of gay men to combat the stigma of HIV AIDS and the resurgence of the Castro clone. The legacy of Bob Miser kind of lives on. The Bob Miser Foundation is presumably a thing. 
they are the ones that provided much of the information for the Wikipedia entries on Beefcake Magazines, Bob Miser, and AMG. But the website is down. This also means that much of his work is on inactive servers. Hopefully the digital copies still exist somewhere on a server and haven't been lost to time. But if you peruse eBay, there are dozens and dozens of entries for old copies of Physique Pictorial. Now we're living in a time where queer erotic art can be found fairly easily. That includes many genders, races, and body shapes. We've come a long way as far as representation goes, but platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube routinely censor queer art, even if it's more tame than the straight art of a similar nature. In a way, we're kind of back where we started, but just like those pioneers, we need to keep fighting back. So go be a thought online. Show your beautiful bodies and get paid doing it. Or don't, you know, if you don't want to. It's time to show the world that our queer bodies are not obscene. Oh, but not me. I'm too shy. <laughs> I'd like to thank my donors, Abby and Nicholas, and I'd like to thank the cool kid, Jorge. As you can see here, they are drawn as a devil because they donate at the $6.66 level. If you want to have a little devil drawing of yourself and have a shout out at the end of the videos, go ahead and donate at that level or at any level below that. Uh, you'll just get the shout out though. You'll also have access to the uncensored version of this video with peepees on the screen. So head on over to my Patreon and uh, become a monthly donor. If you can't afford to have a sustained donation, I totally understand, uh, but you still want to help out, you can go ahead and donate to my coffee. And if you can't even do that, which again, I totally understand, you can go ahead and like and subscribe and share this video with friends and loved ones. All links and citations will be in the description. If you haven't heard it yet, go ahead and listen to the bonus episode of Psychic Dolphin Garage that I guested on. It was a lot of fun and I hope to talk to the whole gang of the Texas boys sometime soon. And as I mentioned earlier, please go check out Rutko's video on MRA and Alpha Men type YouTube channels here on YouTube. I also want to give a final special shout out to Twitter user and electronic musician Petri Dish for buying me a bottle of Effie's beard oil. Uh, please go check out their music. Link will be below. So how about you all? Do you like beefy men? Who's your favorite beefcake from history or contemporary beefcake? I know I said that Warhorse and Effie are fighting for my heart, but honestly, I think Effie is probably my very favorite beefcake right now because he's just so... <sighs> He's just so much, he's just so gay and I love it. <laughs> now try not to get too horny in the comments, but uh, go ahead and let me know. So that'll do it for me today. And until next time, take care and goodbye.